Okay, hello. My name is Peter Rosmanis. I'm talking about hard problems on random graphs. This is a joint work with Jan Dreyer and Henry Lotze. You can see them here on the picture. So, I'm talking about random graphs and in this context a random graph is a very simple model. It's the erlich renyi graph and most of the time with an edge probability of one half. So every edge has a probability of existence that's exactly one half and is independent from each other. Right, um, so there's a lot of research about random graphs. They have many interesting properties. For us, for, for, in, in, for algorithms, it's interesting that um, problems that are hard in the worst case often are very easy on random graphs. So from the mathematician side, there are the zero one laws, which I, I, I will talk about later and which are important for, for, for the proofs that I want to present. And unfortunately, it's very hard to prove that the problem is really hard on average. That is really a pity because we need it. For example, in cryptography, um, we would like to show that it's hard to um, factor a number that is the product of two random primes, but we cannot do that at the moment. So in my talk, I will try to, 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 to do a little bit in this direction by proving that dominating set is hard on, on random graphs. And if I say hard, I I'm just can show that it's as hard as first order model checking. And we can assume that this is a hard problem. So it's again only a relative result. It's a it's a kind of a robust result. So if we change the probability of one half to some other constant probability, the complexity stays the same. So the problem cannot become simple or hard just by playing with the probability. And I will use um, a, a related problem in the proof, but it's interesting in itself because it's such a simple problem. Yeah? You have a random matrix of zeros and ones, quadratic, and the question is, can I find k rows? And I take the um, vector, the Boolean vector of the rows, and I, I do a pointwise and, and the question is, can I get the zero vector from that? It turns out this problem is just as hard as the FO model checking problem. On the other hand, if you take not the AND, but the exclusive OR of the rows, then the problem becomes easy, which is also interesting because this is one version to state uh, the even set problem. And in the worst case, it's a hard problem. Okay, so let's start with uh, my claim that some problems become easy. So let's start with a very simple example, finding a triangle in a graph. Yeah. It's not an NP-complete problem. You can solve it in polynomial time, but we, we don't even know a quadratic algorithm. The best is the complexity for uh, matrix multiplication, which is still slower than quadratic. But if we have a random graph, an erdos renyi graph with edge probability one half, what's then the average running time? Yeah? Sometimes the algorithm can take longer, sometimes faster, but what's the average running time? And yeah, if you don't know this, you might be surprised. You can solve it in constant time on average. And it's even very easy. You just look at the first three vertices and test whether they have a triangle. If not, then you look at the next three and so on. Doing so, you, you will um, find a triangle very quickly. And if not, then you can do something very slow because that happens only with a very, very small probability. And if you add it all up and analyze it, it's easy to see that it's actually a constant time and, and, and the small constant times, by the way. Okay, 
Um, so this is the reason is this abundance of witnesses, which plays a role very often. So you just look at the small part of the graph and you, you, you're bound to find a triangle. So let's, let's go to clicks, which is a little bit more general. So it's an MP complete problem now in general graphs. If you take random graphs, you can solve it in quasi polynomial time. And the reason is that there, there are no bigger triangles than logarithmic size. Eh, not triangles. There are not no bigger cliques than logarithmic with very high probability. And then you can solve it in, in n to the clique size, right? And if we look at the parameterized complexity, it's a W1 complete problem. You can solve it in roughly n to the k by brute force. And it's known that under the exponential time hypothesis, um, you can't even do better than this trivial algorithm. And it has been shown that in the average case, you can solve it in FPT time. So it's very efficient. And this is, uh, this is a nice result because it's very general. This doesn't hold only for constant edge probabilities, but actually for arbitrary edge probabilities that can be a function of n. So it's a very, very general result. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about logic on graphs because this will play a important part in my talk. So you, you can express many graph properties in first order logic. Yeah? You can quantify existentially and universally over vertices. You can you have a predicate for adjacency and you can test equality and you have the usual and or and not. And, and you can combine formulas like that. It's a very nice language to express graph properties. For example, to um, express whether a graph contains a clique of size k, you can just say, yep, yeah, this is the case if there are vertices x1 to xk such that they are pairwise adjacent. And that's exactly what the formula, the first one, expresses. Yeah, but yeah, can you see what's the biggest click in this graph? It's not so easy to see, but I, I, I found out that it's actually five. Yeah, there's no click of size six. And this click of size five is not easy to find, but I think there's even another one. So there are two. Another example, which will be even more important in my talk is dominating set. Yeah, but we have already seen click is easy, that's known. But what about dominating set? I would like to show you that it's probably a very hard problem. Even on average, we know that it's hard in the worst case. So as a logical formula, it could be expressed like that. So are there, do they exist x1 to xk, which will be the dominating set? such that they have the property that for all vertices y, yeah, y is one of the xi's or it's adjacent to one of the xi's. So you have this little small formula which expresses dominating set. So, and here again, it's the same graph. So what's the smallest now dominating set here? Well, Actually, there's a very small one, only two nodes, the red ones, and you can see that it's actually really a dominating set. But I think it's not so easy to find. So these are three of the important problems that are stated formally here. So we will look at the parameterized dominating set. Yeah, K is the parameter. And the question is, is there a dominating set of size k or smaller? And we have the general 
parameterized model checking problem. Here you get as an input a graph, undirected, and some formula with, without um, free variables. And the question is whether this formula holds in the graph G. So does G have the property that is expressed by this formula? And the parameter is the length of the formula. So the graph is in general very big and the formula is rather small and it's the parameter here. And so I would like to show that all these three problems have roughly the same complexity. And this means if one of the problems is in FPT, then all of them are in FPT. And if one one's is not in FPT, then none are. And the proof works roughly like shown on this slide here. And an arrow means if the problem on top is in FPT, then is so if you follow the arrow, then the next problem must be in FPT too. And you see it starts with dominating set and it ends in dominating set at the end. So the cycle is closed. And in between you see you have this matrix problem where, um, yeah, I, I go back one slide. So in the middle is this, is this matrix problem. You have a Boolean matrix n by n. It's random if, if you analyze the average running time. And the question is, are there k rows whose logical end is the zero vector? So this is the, the third important problem. So you see, this is the second one. And then at the bottom is FO model checking. So it turns out that this matrix problem, the FO model checking problem and dominating set, they are all the same complexity wise on average. Yeah? In the worst case, it looks very different. In the worst case, dominating set is much easier than the general FO model checking problem. And in the middle, you see there are some specialized model checking problems. Here we ask whether some fixed formulas, they depend on K, but, but they have all the same shape. There's phi, phi prime, phi double prime. I'll define them in a second. And here the key is a coloring. So phi double prime and phi prime talk about colored graphs. And we need, need this change to, to make the proofs uh, small. So the proofs are not so hard, but there are many of them. Okay, let's start with, assume you can solve dominating set, I claim, then you can solve the matrix problem. And again, here you have a matrix. It's a big one here and the zeros and ones are represented by uh, black and white pixels. And we are interested, are there K rows whose logical end is the zero vector. So first of all, you could also go to the, you can invert the matrix, then it's still random. And you could ask whether the logical or is the one vector, which consists of all ones. And that's already the same as directed dominating sets. So if you think about this matrix as an adjacency matrix of a directed graph, yeah, then logical or gives the one vector of, of k rows if, if the corresponding vertices dominate the whole graph, right? So this is basically the same as directed dominating set, but it's not the same as dominating set on, un, um, on undirected graphs. So let's see how we can do that. And the first trick that we use here is if we want to solve this matrix problem, we're looking for K rows, right? It's sufficient to look at for the K rows in, in the upper part of the matrix. Why? Because you could use a family of permutations and you permute the rows with every permutation in the family. And the family is built in such a way that it guarantees 
that if there's a solution somewhere in the matrix, then one of the permutations will permute the matrix in such a way that it will be in the upper half. And the size of the family is only 4 to the k. If you want the upper half, so now we, we will use uh, a little bit more. Uh, let's assume it's the upper fifth of the matrix. Then the family is a bit bigger, but it's still exponen only exponential in k. So let's assume we're looking, now we have a rectangular matrix. And let's assume this rectangular matrix, m bar, it consists of five square matrices. So it's, a, it's kind of an n times 5n matrix. And we want to find this k rows in m, m bar. Let us rearrange the matrix a little bit. So we construct a matrix M prime. And M prime is constructed in such a way that it's symmetric. So it's the adjacency matrix of, a, of an undirected graph. And here, so you see, we take B, C and D from M bar and put it into M prime. So you have the B on top, then you have the C on the left and D right in the middle. And we take the, the remaining parts of M bar is used to fill it up. Yeah? So we have the B there, so we need B transposed on the opposite side. So to make the matrix um, symmetric. And in the main diagonal, we split up the A in two parts, make it symmetric and fill it up with E prime, which which is half of E. So now we have a symmetric matrix and it's a random matrix. Every bit in this matrix has a probability of one half that it's one because M bar is, if, if M bar is uh, random. Yeah, so, so, but it's symmetric. And if you, if you, now let's assume there are K rows in M bar whose logical O is the one vector. You can, you can reuse these k rows in m bar. So there were three, uh, there were k rows that went through b, c, and d. b, c, and d are not now net, not next to each other, but not on top of each other. So we we just um, use them three times the k rows. So we have then. 3k rows, but we can find 3k rows in M prime such that uh, we, we get the C part from the lower 3k uh, uh, k rows, the D from the middle k rows, and the B from the top k rows, and together they will give us the one vector. Right? So if M bar is a yes instance, then you will also find 3k rows whose logical OR is the one vector in M prime, right? And that means that, that M prime contains a, a dominating set of size 3K. And now we can use the dominating set algorithm to solve the matrix problem. We just find out whether the graph that belongs to M prime has a dominating set of 3K. And if it doesn't, then we can say no. And if it, ha if it has one, then we cannot be sure, but it's very unlikely and we can just run a slow algorithm for P matrix then. Okay, so, so we did a, a little bit progress here. Now I have to uh, get a bit faster. So here phi is um, so-called extension axiom. It says that whatever vertices X and Y you choose, you find always a vertex Z that is connected to all of the X's and not connected to all of the Y's. Yeah. And phi prime and phi double prime are basically the same, but phi prime talks about uh, this, the same, but now it's all black X's. And for all black X and all black uh, and white, Wise, you will find a gray Z 
which is connected to the x's and not connected to the y's. And phi double prime is the same, but now it's not connected to the black ones and not connected to the white ones. So whether you look at phi prime or phi double prime, it doesn't make a big difference because you can reduce it from one to the other very easily just by flipping the edges that go from a black to a gray vertex. So this is a very easy transformation and it preserves this property whether phi prime holds or phi double prime. And by um, having again a family of colorings, they have to be balanced but I cannot go into the details. It's an exponential number in K you can uh, solve also phi by trying all, all kind of com uh, colorings, right? So, so this gets us very far in the proof. And now let's get quickly to the zero one laws. A zero one law says something holds with probability zero or one. And here it's if you have an FO formula, if the graphs get big, getting bigger and bigger, the probability becomes in the limit zero or one. And these extension axioms play a, a, an important role. There are infinitely many because k can be big. But if you take all of them, you, we know that any FO sentence psi follows from the extension axioms or the negation. So if the extension axioms hold, we, we know whether Psi holds yes or no in the limit for finite graphs. Okay, uh, it's known that it's, it's, if you just have Psi, whether the limit is zero or one, this is um, a p-space complete. And now you, you can easily enumerate all proofs for Psi from the extension axioms. Then you find out whether it's Psi or not Psi and you have some finite set of extension axioms. If you can solve dominating set, you can also find now out whether the extension axiom holds. So you just do that and if they hold, we know whether Psi is true or not. If not, we, we can again do something slow. Yeah? So this gives us a round. Yeah? Dominating set is now a, a sub problem of FO model checking and all is proved. So let's just very quickly look at some other stuff. So first of all, it's not so important that the probability is exactly one half. It's a bit tricky, but you can prove changing the probability will not change um, the complexity. It's, it's, it's kind of strange proof, very interesting in my opinion, but it works. And finally, there's the even set problem. This is famous. It was open for a very, very, very long time. And just a short time ago, it, it has been shown that it's actually a hard problem in the worst case. However, so this is the same as this matrix problem, but you take the logical exclusive or instead of the end. Here, it's, it turns out to be easy. It can be solved in FPT in, in average. And the proof is, again, you trick it into uh, looking only on the, on the upper part of the matrix and you compute the rank of this. And if the rank is full, if it has full rank over F2, it, it cannot have uh, independent, uh, um, um, a set of k, a solution of size k. Yeah, the rank would be smaller. So if the rank is full, you can just say no. And if it's if it's if it's not full rank, then you can just run a slow algorithm. Because this is very um, uh, improbable that this will happen. Okay, so this brings me to the end of my talk. So I was talking about that the worst case complexity is, 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 is increasingly hard for clique, dominating set, and, and then FO model checking. But 
in, on the average, click is easy, but then you jump from dominating set and, and, and uh, model checking, it's the same. And the matrix problem is also hard, but even set, even if it's um, even if it's uh, very similar to this problem, becomes easy. So the big open question at the end is, can we find something uh, that, that bridges the worlds between average case complexity and and and, um, and worst case? So this is a, a very big open question. Okay, thank you for watching the video.